Ryan here, and I'm here with Viking versus Samurai. Yeah, everybody's want to see that, but actually, it's Viking Age, which includes the early raiding time period around the uh, ninth century, up until the Battle of Hastings, 1066. The Viking Age, up to the Normans, uh, of the weapons we're going to be testing against uh, Iron Mount Armories, Samurai armor. The uh, Tose of Rusolku uh, is the new armor that they used in the 16th century. It's when they got new steels. Uh, mind you, we did get some piercings from bronze in our last video when we did the uh, Greek hoplite, but from the early period, such as uh, the time of Achilles, uh, up to the Spartan era, uh, which we actually did that at the time of 300. We did a blade from there on the head. Uh, we also tried the spear style that I believe they use the overarm throwing slide or overarm throwing thrust. Uh, we did that with our aspis, so we're going to check that out. It was really good. Those holes look terrible, but I'm going to be honest. Nothing got in more than a uh, three-quarter inch, uh, which didn't even go through the uh, through the actual uh, kimono or the uh, top of the uh, clothing underneath, uh, and didn't do any damage to our ballistic shelter. I've got my skjolder, or skjolder here, my Viking Age shield. I've got a Viking Age sword, pattern welded. We're going to try on the kabuto. I'm even going to work my way up to using the dreaded Dane axe. I've got a bearded sow right here. Uh, and on the dole, we're going to test a Viking Age javelin or spear. This is the one I think would have the greatest chance of going deeper or doing better than the bronze spear. It has a lower profile, so it might not get hung up as bad. Now, do I really think it's going to kill him outright? Probably not. And no, you wouldn't aim for a breastplate like this, nor did they normally wear breastplates like this during the Viking Age, or at least in, in the Scandinavian countries or in uh, Saxony, England, you know, what have you, uh, Anglo-Saxon England. Uh, but what we will do is we'll test it, see what our javelin does. This has pierced a 15th century breastplate before. Uh, it's about a 15 to 14 gauge breastplate, so it did make it in a little bit. So. I'm expecting to make it somewhat into this. We'll see what happens. And I have Viking Age arrows. I have a bow, and with these full length arrows, they will be hitting at approximately 65, 70 pound draw. Uh, and I've got a leaf shaped edge, which is something like we used in the Viking Age. And I'm going to use a short bodkin uh, in this episode. So anyway, I hope you all enjoy this. Let's get started. This is an important part of the test. Uh, historically, we know that uh, Europeans a lot of times wore arming caps. Uh, we even hear some stories of uh, ancient warriors using their hair as an arming cap. And the uh, chanmage was a uh, the top knot or the uh, actual piece of hair that comes over, much like you see on sumo wrestlers modernly, but now it's a flary hairstyle. But what would happen is wearing it in court and stuff, it would kind of be put in a position like this. And this was actually their hair that came out of their head. But in this situation, it's for battle. This would be pulled over like this, kind of like a mohawk or something pulled across the top of your head. But this provided an enormous amount of padding. Since uh, our Ivar Draugr head here has no uh, hair of his own, we're going to give him his own uh, red uh, chanmagi. Uh, and we're going to take our... Uh, Tachimaki, which is a headband, not like in uh, uh, the Karate Kid, but more like a kendo practitioner would wear. This is a bit uh, light cloth, lighter than they would use, but I'm going to put this over the actual head and try to get it on here properly. And this is going to come back and secure our Chanmagi and help protect his head from damage. This is a very important part of our testing because the helm has a cloth liner like most historical helms do and helps hold the helm from your head like strapping wood. But we know that padding aids tremendously. This head's been tested, I'm not going to lie, with another weapon, uh, the bog axe, and through another helmet. It actually cut through that helmet and into the head. So hopefully this is going to give him lots of protection. Uh, and we're going to start off with a very brutal weapon. We have our hachi here, or our dome. Uh, we have our minpo. Uh, Minpo Yorari means uh, face armor. We have our uh, Kana, Kana, our Kari, our uh, Shikiro, our Fuchigachi Mon here, and our Fuchigachi. So we have the whole helmet. Uh, 
And yes, as you guess, I would dress in full armor for Viking versus Samurai armor. Yeah, the thing that started our entire channel was us arguing with Deadliest Warrior about the representation of the Scandinavian or Viking warrior, uh, or misrepresentation that they did at the time. Uh, wasn't necessarily so much about who won, it was just we thought they represented the Viking poorly in a historical fashion. It wasn't very historical, it was more stereotypical. Uh, they didn't do the samurai much justice either, but uh, since we're doing the Viking Age against the Iron Mountain Armory, uh, Tose Gusoku, uh, we might as well uh, ham it up and uh, go along with the way the channel started in the first place. Uh, what I have set up today, I have my uh, Skjolder, or a Skjolder, Viking shield. Of course, that would be a great weapon, and I think that would give Vikings advantages if they were fighting in single combat. Uh, that was the main thing. Every weapon was paired with a shield, usually, except for late, late century, the Danax, uh, which I think usually the shieldman uh, would pretty much protect the Danaxman as he attacked people in front, just like they would spearmen. Uh, but anyway, we're going to start off with a pattern welded sword. Uh, some of you will recognize it. It's a beautiful sword. Uh, it's made of two different styles of steel, one harder and one softer. Uh, back in the day, the edge would actually be uh, added to it and be hard iron, where different grades of iron and steel would be mixed to make the blade, very much like they do the katana. It's very similar in a lot of ways. Uh, it's just the European method. The weight of the sword's not very much different than many katanas. The only difference is it's set up differently with a uh, really tight grip. This is a very historical version of it. Uh, and we have a uh, pommel that hooks it in the hand so it can be cast out from behind the shield. And it can be wielded in all sorts of ways. We use the back of the edge and so on. This is a very tight grip, but what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna go ahead and attack the uh, kabuto on the hachi, which is the dome. Uh, like I said, I don't really see any advantage to trying to hit the uh, uh, Shikoro because it's going to give. You might dent it some, you're not going to injure the man that bad hitting here. Uh, it'd be very difficult just to cut through these cords in actual combat uh, because you on the Fumagashi would uh, stop you from cutting into the actual cords. So other than possibly cutting one this way, which wouldn't do you a lot of good, uh, I think the best bet, if you were attacking with a Viking sword, would do the same thing that most samurai would have done with a katana or tachi. They would do a straight overhead cut, uh, and if that's all they had to hit the armor, and they couldn't get in a niche or a gap, like I said, that's the disclaimer in this video, we want to hit niches and gaps in real combat, you want to thrust in those spots, you want to cut in those spots. But with a hard enough blow, uh, just like the uh, shillelagh or club, our primitive club did, you could possibly kill the man that way. And this is a much heftier sword than the one like Achilles might have used, the now two, the Bronze Age sword, or the one like the Spartan would have used, the uh, Iron Age uh, Xiphos. So let's go ahead, get started. We're gonna start with this sword here and move on to possibly the ax. Hope everyone can see I have a shield. My Skjolder may be in the way, but I'm going to be hitting somewhere in this area, and I would like to make sure the helm is in the proper position on his head. But it looks like I'll be hitting somewhere around here, which I've already hit, because that's the best spot in my mind. Oh! I hit a little bit further over, and we have a nice cut in the helm. I was trying to hit about here, but I redirected it, thinking that possibly this might be better. We'll see what happens. There goes his Hana again, his uh, nasal protection. At least his nose didn't go with it this time. Let's see what happened with our cut. And I'm glad I didn't cut in the exact same area, but you can see the new cut right here. The actual dent is about the same as the other swords. I would expect it to be way deeper. Of course, I was throwing as if I was in combat and didn't want to be overly committed, but didn't want to be super out of the ordinary because the man would be fighting you back. I still think that's an excellent hit in the area. Now let's remove his, uh, oh, didn't mean to drop his 
uh, Min Yorari or his uh, Mimpo, his face piece. Let's remove the Hachimaki, the head scarf or head wrap. This Chanmagi probably protected him again, it would seem. Is there any damage up here at all? Sorry, I'm walking around trying to see. This is quite a tall samurai. He's, he's extremely tall. Hey. Not at all. So the sword, and that was a decent hit. Uh, I did aim a hair over than what I originally uh, imagined because I was thinking that might be a better hit in my mind, right? As I went to do it, I was like, I think I'll try to hit dead center. Uh, and uh, even though I hit a spot that had already been hit, he seems to be okay. I say we move on to the hand axe. His Chan Magi uh, protected him again, which is his hairdo, basically the hair up over the top of the head, uh, and held down by his uh, Hachimaki, which is his uh, headband or his bandana, which, of course, we got a southwestern one. But concluding that and the including that and the uh, actual lining of the helmet. Uh, that protected him quite well. Plus, this is a relatively thin helm in my mind, uh, in lots of ways, but it absorbs the damage. When these hits happen, it's eating the energy up, yet it's keeping it far enough away from his head that I'm not able to injure his head. I haven't seen one injury yet, technically, except for the actual club, or the shillelagh seems to have in the first video, uh, conked him a little bit, but not that bad. He could have shook it off and continued fighting, and maybe it would have disoriented him. Who knows? But uh, those type of weapons were used on the Japanese field. Uh, well, the Viking used axes a lot. During the Viking Age, axes are very common because of armor like I'm wearing right here. Uh, you could still break bones through male armor. Uh, you could still injure somebody with an axe, or even hit hard enough into a helmet to crack a skull and kill a man. They talk about it in sagas of helms being split. I have a long handle. Uh, Viking style or Nordic axe uh, and what I'm going to do is aim at the head but the actual samurai themselves there are some stories it's not a real common battlefield weapon but they fight with axes very much like Dane axes or large two-handed axes and they're called the Ono uh, these axes were used in the field so they found use for axes as well against armor such as this so I won't be surprised if this does wound him badly or at least knock him out but let's go ahead and try it. Uh, this is something a, a Scandinavian warrior, an early Viking, a Saxon, anybody would probably try if they were fighting armor that's impenetrable dang near like this. Because that uh, cut was very powerful, but it didn't take it out. Let's go ahead. I'm going to try to come in with a cut in this area and see what happens. Oh! That came over a little further than I expected. I would have expected that to cut through because I actually did point first here. But apparently the uh, metal is thicker and tougher than I expected. Uh, it also ate up more of the energy because it didn't hit exactly the way I wanted. Let's go ahead and take this off. Let's see if his nose runs away again. Ha ha ha, his, his uh, Hannah, his uh, nasal protection. They didn't always wear that a lot of times. That's the reason this is a really nice design that you can remove it. It helps you breathe, speak better. Uh, a lot of times it was more ceremonial, but if you needed the extra protection and it, you can actually adjust that and make it tighter if you choose. It's just it's, this one's loosened up over us using it over and over again. Uh, we'll see how bad our dent is in it. Not as bad as I expected. I thought that would be much worse. The paint flaking is not the metal. Uh, it did crease into it really well. Uh, I did not pierce it. That's actually better than I expected. Really, uh, feel the head here. I have to get the mempo off and the cutting, the neck protection, which is like a gorget. In all probability, this is gonna look a little bit different if we repair it. Finally, True, I'm but I am gonna try to repair to it the and make a video about the repairs. Yes, but I'm not gonna be able to match the paint very easily. This is just where the coconut, uh, yes, it's a coconut skull that's been cured in the gel, sticks up through, that's not an injury. Uh, it didn't even impact his head. Maybe we could perhaps give him something harder. Give him something a little bit harder from the lighter edge. 
This Kabuto from Iron Mountain Armory performs so well against the Viking weapons that I'm actually uh, impressed. It survived the axe hit. Now, if some of you all see the axe hit and assume that I didn't hit just right, or something went wrong, or wasn't full force, I was throwing a powerful attack, it's just the armor's shape and the way the axe landed caused the hit. But I already predetermined when I did this test, I would hit everything one time uh, with each weapon. Because the armor does have the benefit of the doubt, I'd be trying to hit a man in battle, I'd be trying to land it on his armor, as long as I land a good solid hit in the armor, it doesn't skip off, uh, that is the blow. So he survived up till now. Uh, the, the worst thing I think we've seen is the club. But this is a lot like an Ono. And yes, the samurai, there's pictures of them holding axes like they're going to fight with them in some of the old drawings and some legends of the Ono, an axe. And uh, this axe is similar in many ways, but this is a bearded Dane axe, uh, something that you see on the Bay Bayou Tapestry. And this is the dreaded Dane axe. So this has killed uh, Viking in armor, or uh, the Ginger. Uh, it's killed any man-at-arms, warriors, Norman alike, Saxons, uh, horses, uh, because it has so much length. It's a pole arm and it's an axe. Uh, so this could be a Japanese weapon in theory, but uh, we're using a Viking axe today. So we're going to go ahead and see if it can survive the hit. Uh, maybe his Chanmagi won't protect him anymore. I'm going to go ahead. Uh, I'm going to hit it in a spot where we haven't hit it, hopefully. And I will swing it over. And we got a glance. I don't think that killed him, but we really deformed the helmet. I uh, came in at this area right here. I was going to aim for this area, but it looks like we hit in this area and it glanced off. Hard to do when you're going full power, but let's go ahead and see what happened to it. And we've got the black bees flying around that hang out in my targets around us. A little unnerving. Hit very much the same spot, uh, which might have aided it in doing more damage to the head if it did do damage to the head, but it kind of cut and glanced. That happens sometimes, especially on longer handle axes when it hits metal. That's good metal because we don't have any cuts in the metal, which is uh, surprising to me. Uh, let's go ahead and undo. Hachimaki, our uh, bandana scarf, and see how bad he was wounded here. I don't see any new wounds. I see the same spot where the helm looked like it might have hit, but I'm beginning to think that maybe the helm never hit the head in the first place. This might have been from our other testing. I still think that. I'm sorry that I might have mentioned that. Uh, this, was, this was used before. This head, we didn't want to waste it because this is just a, a, not a head to chop up, but a head to test. Uh, uh, armor see what on can get through. and I don't think it went through he's fine I don't see any damage to his head do you it, now maybe the blow would have injured the neck but since it kind of glanced I doubt it I would say he survived the dreaded, a dreaded Dane axe hit to the head with uh, the Caputo from Iron Mountain Armor <laughs>
if it actually wounded or injured our uh, samurai. Much better uh, than the one we did our debunking video on where they had just a straw or a stuffed uh, sand mannequin or something that was very ragdoll-like. Uh, it is tied. I'm not using a proper sarashi on the outside. I'm using one that's more of a shell one. I'm hopefully I don't hit it, but I've got it to help secure it to our post. It can give and move. This is not solid, as most people would think, you know, something solid, you know, you just put it up against a tree and try to shoot uh, arrows into it or, or thrust it. Uh, no, this gives, and it could possibly get knocked loose, but I doubt it with it tied. Uh, hopefully, uh, our uh, samurai today holds up well, and we're going to mostly focus on this area right here. This is where the actual ballistics gel is in this area. Uh, and we're going to see what happens in, in the uh, dole, uh, dole area here. Uh, we might do a little testing on some of the other stuff, but this is a mannequin, so these are not proper analogs. So the main focus is to test the metal itself, the steel from Iron Mountain Armory, and see if it can hold up to all the weapons that we will be testing today. I should like to thank Daniel Pearson one more time for sending these historical arrows with excellent fletchings, uh, made out of very nice wood, I believe a type of uh, cedar. Uh, and they have uh, nice medieval heads. This is a nice leaf-shaped uh, arrow, like could have been used in the Viking Age, like what they would consider a razor head or a hunting head, or even a war head if you were shooting at people who weren't wearing super heavy armor. This should work quite well. Let's go ahead and see what it does to the Iron Mountain Armory Dole. I shall try to aim right over the ballistic shell this time. Maybe I can hit it right on. Over our ballistics gel, our arrow stuck in. I should put the bow down. So, we so we need to see if there's a wound. Our arrowhead stuck in the target. It's going to be very difficult to remove. No, not as much as I thought, but it went in approximately three quarter inches. The same thing as our spear. That's what it seems to be. Is our spear exactly like when we tested for the Yark Sprave shield? Went in the exact same distance as our arrows, even though it's a larger head. So maybe we're looking at about the same thing here. We don't know. One second. I would say our samurai is not on the verge of death, but who okay. knows what's You're going on. Show. I have to untie the uh, belt. This is a real silk belt too. So if you were to hit the belt, I could see it being quite protected. Okay, we have the hole here. It hit over the wrapped area. We're gonna have to uh, undo and this some and look under it. That's all I know to do. Okay, where's our wound? Doesn't look like there is one. Have the gel messing up there a little bit just from setting against the thing and getting smacked around. There is no wound. Okay. It didn't make it through our cloth. And uh, our samurai is totally all right. Totally alive. Right. Not even a hole. I don't think there is a hole. Yep. That's just old damage to an old... Uh, I didn't want to use the nice Hakama that was sent, so I used an old Hakama that I own. Okay, I'm going to show, try a shark bodkin. Shark bodkins are more what could have possibly been used during the Viking Age. They've always had bodkin arrows, or arrows that were designed with a shape to penetrate armor, such as mail, uh, hardened leather if they used it. Uh, other, all types of armor that can be pierced, other than like cloth. I've noticed that bodkins don't do very well on cloth, believe it or not. Actually, edges do better, uh, razor sharp edges. Uh, but these work really good against types of armor, whether it be plate or male armor. So this may penetrate better, it may not, I am uncertain, uh, but let's go ahead and try it. It's something they could have had in the Viking Age and they might have encountered. Wow! Oh, this one actually stuck in the armor and we got over the gel, so let's see what happens. Yeah. We've got a very happy little Viking yeah. kid trying to watch this. Yeah. We definitely have a very happy little Viking kid. Oh, these are sealed in place. They're just stuck on here with beeswax. And yes, they did this with a lot of uh, war arrows so they couldn't be used afterwards. I just thought everybody would find that entertaining. These are totally period arrows. I'm going to leave that in there until we take it off and look at it. And I think we should go to the Viking spear next.
so far I'm extremely impressed with this armor. Some of you all might be out there sitting there going, wow, this armor is getting holes in it. It's useless. And no, I'm looking at it. It's not too heavy. I've worn it in lots of testing and uh, so no damage to our gel whatsoever. Correct. It didn't make it through our cloth. Now remember, this is not a lot of cloth. This isn't heavy gambesons or something. It's just a few layers of cloth. Uh, and what, that's what's deceiving. If you look at something like this, you'd immediately assume you would be injured, but your belly gives. Uh, the armor's not directly against the body. And uh, that was enough to eat up the energy that was left over after it punched a hole. So no damage was done to it. All right, I have chosen. I have chosen this design of spearhead that was used during the Viking Age, very much like a blade, uh, because uh, the triangular later cross sections that were used for more lance-like work and for piercing mail uh, are not really what we need. They're a lot like the uh, early Bronze Age or Middle Bronze Age spear that we tested. They have a very thick ridge in the center. This one being thinner might go deeper, and I'm sorry, if I can kill the man through this, you know I will. I did Viking versus Samurai back in the day. You know how much I got into that. So if I can do that, if I can get it into the gel, at least to injure it, I'd be extremely happy. So what we're going to do today is we're going to do a Viking overarm throwing slide or throwing technique where I use a throwing thrust, just like I did with a bronze spear, and see if we can get better penetration. If I can't, I'm going to be extremely impressed. Uh, I'm thinking that uh, maybe I can get a little bit more. Maybe. Let's see what I can I got a thrust into it. I don't know how far we got. I removed the spear already, but we know where it went in. It went in right under the arrow. And surprisingly enough, we only got about three quarters of an inch. The same thing we've been getting with everything else. I don't think that that made it into our gel. Should I thrust it one more time, you think, and then test underneath it? Because if we don't, we'll assume that maybe I could have done better. Everybody knows I have to warm up. All right, we should give it out one more try. Oh! I hit a double layer, and I wasn't even able to go through. Up here, I think I hit below the double layer and cut into it. This one, I wasn't able to go through the double layer. Give it one more. One more good one. One more good one. Oh! Ooh, that one I felt it go in. That's going to be our best one right there, I think, of all of them. I got three quarters of an inch, about, maybe, maybe, maybe about an inch because I felt it push back from the gel itself. So let's check it out and see what happens. If I damage the gel, I'll be so impressed. I mean, with myself, not the armor, but I think the armor's doing its job. Otherwise, this man would be dead. A thrust like that, um, and it would be out his back. Couldn't get that one. Her head's falling off again. Her hood. She's like the headless monks from uh, Doctor Who or something. I mean. We've got to cover the naked head up. It hit right here. I felt it poke in like it was going into gel or something. I don't see a cut. It hit right there. It impressed How deep on it, did it, it go? It impressed on it, but it didn't break it. That was just um, cloth. We got an issue. She is not wounded in any manner. The Viking child wishes to kill her. No, not yet. Not yet. Yeah. Spear comes in the video. <laughs> but no. The armor has done its job. Even with my extreme thrusting, it's deformed. It's eaten up energy to keep it from thrusting through even deeper, like it might happen with a thicker breastplate. But it stopped it from penetrating. And the double seam right here, you can see, it completely stopped it from going through at all. Most of them, you can see, we hit below the area where it has a double seam. This area is about a double seam, but not quite, because it starts about there. Uh, but still, all of this, and all in all, I am highly impressed with the entire thing. This is amazing. The one over here that we thought went oh so deep didn't even make it through the uh, inner lining of the breastplate. 
I hope you enjoyed our episode today and our visit to the Viking Age. We did the age of the Vikinger, or the man who actually went raiding and went about and settled and traded and whatever fortune came his way is what he got. Uh, we did that and we also did the uh, Norman, theoretically. Uh, the age of the Norman when uh, William the Conqueror uh, went into England in 1066 and took it over. So I hope you enjoyed that. We did that against Iron Mountain Armory's armor. Uh, and what I'm really surprised about is the Viking Age spear being steel and having a steel edge, which would be an iron spear and have a steel edge or a hard iron edge, historically did the exact same thing that the bronze spear did. And neither one of them went any deeper than three quarter inch uh, and nothing killed our samurai. Our samurai or Ashigaru, whatever he may be or she may be, because we have a female mannequin, everybody knows, uh, survived everything so far. Everything we've done. Axes to the head. Dane axes at that. Uh, I would expect, I would have expected her to have died. Sorry. Uh, but I hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, if you want to get a discount, you can use uh, the product code THRAND at www.japanese-armor.com. Uh, and they'll give you a either a discount or a free gift depending on what you order and how it works out. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this episode. And as always, Farvel.